My name is Lynn with my partner Steve from the UK. We bought a 300 year old stone farmhouse and olive grove in Abruzzo, Italy that we call Brambletai. Brambletai is situated just outside a small village overlooking the Adriatic Sea and the Maiella National Park. We've taken on the restoration and renovation of Brambletai ourselves to become our future home. We'd love you to come along with us whilst we learn new skills, a new language, live the lifestyle and explore the region with our dog Button. Well here we are again, good morning everybody, uh, probably just saw me cutting up some steels. I don't know what it is about me but I could have left a, a little bit longer on some of them but um, I need them to be the right length and all the same length so that's uh, that's me. Uh, if you look behind me up the top there um, I showed you in the last part of, uh, of this part 3 series of, uh, of the girders uh, what I'm trying to do here. Just trying to do as much uh, supporting as possible. I think we've done enough. Uh, I'm going to start taking out those upper stones now. And uh, I've got three girders ready to go in. And it'd be nice uh, by the end of the day to see them in and cemented. So uh, I'll get on that, but I'll take you through um, step of the way as I go. Okay, so uh, I'll sign off for now, but uh, speak later. Okay, I can't use the motor picker uh, to get these stones out, this one here, um, it's just too violent on the wall and it starts to shake out stuff that you don't want to uh, to be loosened up, so what I do is just go around the edge, you can see how fragile um, the original mortar is, I mean it's not cement, it's really just a, be a mix of sand, I'm probably natural line, I would imagine that's what they would have done. Um, but it's, uh, it's quite soft. And if you were, uh, once I've got this edge going, I'm going to take him out. Up there. Don't rush it, just uh, move along nicely. I've got this cement, which is annoying because somebody's. Obviously it's sometime fudge some cement in there. Goodness knows what for, there's absolutely no need. Yeah, let's hold that up. You can see is this one here, if you can see it on the camera. It's just starting to show the, the edge of this stone. So I'm concentrating on these two stones. The one above this one and that one. I'm not saying I've got to go up to there. So I've got a stone there which I'll probably end up breaking in half from there. Right now I'm going to do that yet, but I tend to deal with things as I get to them. But uh, thinking ahead, that's going to be a good way to have an accident if you're thinking of something. Doing something and concentrating on something else. It's a bit awkward to get to, but I've only got to do this once. I hope, and uh, I've just given myself a little hole for the crowbar to get in there. And I'm just going to see if I've got any leverage on that stone. So I've got a, I've got a selection of crowbars. 
and this one seems to work the best for the three foot crowbar. Michael Dew's book. The idea is, is just to watch how the stone reacts. Does it move at all? Because that's I know that this one's going sideways, but this one goes long ways, which means it's doing just as much of a job as that. This looks much bigger, but it's, in actual fact, uh, I don't think it is. Um, you can see there's there's more movement on this side than there is on this stone. So anyway, that was worth a try. Now there is movement on the bottom one because it's sitting in sideways. I just thought I'd get the top one out before I attempt this, but if you wiggle it, you'll see a tiny bit of movement on the stone which releases some of that sand and mortar. Uh, it takes a while to do this, so I'm not going to show the whole thing because uh, we'll be here all day. So this could take up to a good hour to get this to move at all. Um, but just by going around doing this, probably be uh, a lot quicker with the machine. Okay, we moved on a bit. It doesn't look like much, I know that. But we're going to start to release this stone. What it's done, it's broken into two. Obviously quite soft this one. Um, and I've managed to get a hole, a groove down here and a hole in here. Now, if I can get around the scaffolding properly and get in there, you'll find uh, someone's keystone. Looks a bit like a shard, but it also looks a bit like the, the axe head. A handle would go on. It's been made. Um, they just go in. Some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller. Some of them are about that size. And they've always got this fan tail on them. And then when they put that stone in, they put that in at the end. And it just stops that stone from moving. It's quite interesting. I'll save that one. That's the first one I've actually saved to show you. But they come out quite easily. So this stone here is going to come out. So uh, yeah, let's go. Well, oh, it's not a particularly big stone. So I can just lift this one out. It's still, still about 10 kilos there. Uh, so we'll save that. That stone I just took out was an edge finishing stone. What it means is it, it's got one flat side on it. It's not exactly flat, but it's, uh, it's textured, but it's, it's good enough to use as an external stone when you're building back up. And it's nice to keep those, because the less I have to make, the better. Uh, right, back to the crowbar. I'm just going to push some of the debris through the other side. You can see that pushes a hole all the way through now. And the level of the steel coming through is about here. Is about here on the other side. Obviously I want to come, that's going to come out. That's going to come out. So what we're going to have to do is make up a tub of cement and lay it on when we lay in the, um, when we lay in the lintels. We'll put some cement, a layer of cement in there. And get this, this one out here, because he is in our direct line of fire for um, the goats. I think what I'll do, it'll be easier if I just show you, and then uh, I'll put you back on the, um, take you off of here. And I'm going to take the camera up the ladder. Now, this is my view. Um, now what I need to do is get you inside the scaffolding and just inside. Right, okay. That stone there's got to come out. There's the top line of the girder 
going across there. Obviously that's the bottom line, doesn't need to be said. Haven't got to do any more down here, all that is clear and obviously all these stones are going to come out anyway once I've got those in. So once I get uh, this one out, this one out, this one out, I'm nearly up to my um, plumb hole. So that was the horizontal hole I drilled through which I've been relying on all the time and it's actually worked quite well. I'm going to put you back on the tripod. Uh, so it's hard using a camera with builder's gloves on. Anyway, you're back on there, but what I'm trying to show you is those blocks I've pointed out are probably going to come out reasonably quickly, so I'll leave you on for a minute and see if I can get them out. Back to the crowbar, she's those obvious thing to use at the moment. I want to see if there's any movement in, in this one. Not overly big. There you go. Now he's moving. Yeah, just a millimetre is enough. That's all it needs to tell me. And if I've got that, I can just do yeah, a little bit more wiggle. This is the hard way of doing it. It's easier with a machine, but uh, it's a bit safer. It's safer doing this way. A bit longer and a bit more effort. Right. Right, it's probably fine. Any upward motion, anything that's going to do in that, pushes that up, it's going to start hitting now. I haven't got a problem. As long as it wants to come out. There you go. And you can wind around, and often as not, it will just sit down in a second, uh, just hopefully on here. So it looks like two stones in one, there you go. So this is going to make its way a little forward, so it doesn't fall back on me. Uh, so it's out. I'm just going to try and work in... Obviously I've got scaffolding in the way, I can't do anything about that. I've set up to work around it and this is... One of, the new problem, one of the problems I knew I was going to have. But what it means is I can get over the top of this stone. There's some rubbish here, but I've got all the way in there. And get him out, now he should just pull out. But just make this as easy as possible for yourself. If you ever think about doing these houses, these stones on the old Abruzzese farmhouses, they're, they're more precisionally put in by the craftsmen of the day who put them in. So what's this stone been sitting here? 300 years maybe? Um, they made sure they took them all up nicely together, like a dry stone wall, self-supporting in a way, because it just didn't have cement, didn't have modern, modern products. So you have to get it out the way, a little bit the way it went in, which is just a bit of a wedging, a bit of manoeuvring, and I'm sure they would have tapped it off with a wooden mallet or something at the end just to finally secure it. So, I'd, it feels quite heavy this one, so uh, <laughs> got to be a little bit careful. Now, what it's doing, it's, come, it's definitely coming out, but it wants to come forward a bit because it's hitting the one I've just taken out. There's no place for that to manoeuvre at the moment, so we're going upwards with this. And just millimetre by millimetre, like pumping a jack, and this will come out. Okay, tools away. And uh, what I normally do when I'm doing work into this side is put a pile of rocks at the bottom. I'll show you them in a minute. And just in case something does fall out, it falls on the pile of rocks and it just breaks the fall. It stops the rock from breaking in half, but it also stops doing any damage to the floor. And they, and they fall with quite a weight, so they, in this way that really breaks that fall. Um, if I can hold it and bring it out, like that, is ideal. Just take that one outside, so that's your rock. It's not overly large, another 10 kilos, 12 kilos, something like that. When they get up to the 40, 50, 60 kilo mark, 
Uh, I tend to use a chain and tackle. I know the weight they're going to be when they're larger. And only a fool would try and remove it on its own. You've got to go with the stone, to be honest. So, this is probably about 18 kilos, 20 kilos, this is heavy. But not, not too heavy. Right, you can see how quickly this starts to happen. We are moving along nicely. So, three stones gives you uh, quite a lot of distance. Now, we know that the ones on the front are already taken out. And what's left is, is this rubbish sand. It literally just crumbles away. And I prefer to take it to the outside of the house rather than the inside of the house, because all I've got to do here is clean it up. Out there, it gives me a good base for the around the edge of the house to stand on, particularly when it's raining. So that works quite nicely. If we use that fast forward movie setting on these cameras, you uh, you don't get any explanation unless you do a voiceover. Uh, we've had quite a few comments about about the fast forward. Yeah, it's great if you don't have to talk and it's pretty obvious what you're doing. But also, it stops you understanding fully what's being done because I can't sit and explain it properly. Here it is, keystone. Look at that, fanned. It looks like a shard, but it's quite particularly made. So again, it's got that, uh, it's got that fan shape. And that was the one that, the other side of the one we just took out. So keep that in mind now. They're not overly engineered, it's quite straightforward, but they clearly cut off another stone with a particular type of um, cutting axe. Or the Italians, the old Italian craftsmen used to use long handled hammers. And on the front there, they have two completely different shapes. One will be for chopping and one will be for hammering. Um, we're not really used to that in England, but a different type of building style, I guess. And, um, with that hammer they would do most of this work just with that one tool rather than getting up and down the ladder as you can see I am. We have got an animal here, I don't know what it is. Uh, always careful with animals if it's bats because they live inside the stones um, and goodness knows how they get out because I'll never find their entrance. Uh, if it's bats I'll, I'll stop here and I'll, uh, I'll see what's going on and if I can get them to move out. They are moving around outside at the moment in the evening um, so they are starting to get out in the, the evenings now um, but I mean we have to do this job uh, and uh, I'll give them a chance to leave and if they don't leave I just guide them out with my hand and we can take them off somewhere else to another building and let them live there but often as not you know they're there if you can't see them because uh, you hear them just make that little squeak I think there was about an Italian Another Italian word. I think it's pipistrello. I think it's so anyway. I don't know. Somebody will tell me. But I think it's pipistrello. Right. Now this is an example of a stone which clearly came from the sea. It has been eaten like coral. And obviously they use these just as fillers in this house. They're not particularly great face stones. Imagine we wanted a open stone face wall here. It's just not practical because this is like. Look, this is the stone, and if you can see that, I could use it as a piece of chalk. And not only that, it breaks like a piece of chalk. Here, but on the distance, I'm doing what I'm doing. Just been up to see it. She's outside, and she loves sitting outside on the grass, under the olive trees, and watch all the way down, the, up and down the road. So she tells me every time somebody comes. Right, we can now see. Uh, that piece of lintel very, very easily. Now, it's this one. That has to come out. It's not moving. There's no... It's more brittle than anything else. Um, so that is... It's not moving at all. I can't, I can't feel any movement in that. So what I've got to do Find out where that stone ends. It's either there or there. Okay. So there is the hole. 
and you can see the end of the lintel. I've taken back this stone as much as I need to at the moment, uh, so that'll be this one here. And I'm looking at that one, uh, that one there, that's it. Now, if I go there, you'll see a void in the whole wall. And that's almost certainly had been, uh, obviously it was there right from the origin. But it's probably linking up with the way that they make these um, these ceilings. Whilst there's a, if I look on the other side, you'll see it a bit better. So that ceiling there is made like a triangle. It's got two sides to it. And then it comes up and shaped and chamfered into stones. But inside that there is a hole, which you could get in from above. There are access hatches and they fill them with rubbish. And those are quite large. And what we'll do is when we refinish the ceiling, is we'll fill this with a silicon ball or a polystyrene ball all the way to the top. So that just gives us some uh, some more insulation. Uh, if we look here again, so we've got, we're in a good position. The problem is I have to fill that hole up partly because obviously I've got no support there for the uh, the ends of the architrava. So, as always, there's always a bit more work to do. Uh, so what I'm going to do is concentrate on this side and get this done once and do it properly, as you know. And uh, and then we'll move on to the other side, which isn't half as bad. I don't know. I haven't seen a void. Um, now, what I have seen. Uh, snake skins, so obviously not now because they'll be. I presume that snakes, the black snakes, are hibernating, and uh, I haven't seen many in and around the house. But they've often used. I'm just trying to look in that hole just to see if there is any nests at all. Um, I'm not bothered about the animals. I'm quite happy. Uh, I kind of like the things. Or I kind of like the animals that people don't like. Strange enough and uh, not been bitten yet. I've come across enough of them in this house and what it seems quite strange is if you just show them the way out without any attacking moves with a hammer or the long bar or anything they just make their way out. I uh, don't know whether they know, they seem to know but they don't seem to scupper out like you would think and um, they just walk off wherever it is and, uh, and leave you alone. Uh. Oh. Oh. Right again. Not too heavy. 15 kilos. And I'm nearly there. What I don't want to do is to take any more stones out on that left hand side because that was a tooth going in, so that's gone in further. Uh, that one there, it's gone in further than I wanted to take out. You should be able to see that we're becoming nearly perpendicularly square with that architrava, the one on the outside. So it's giving us a nice slot, but what it has done, taking that stone out there, has given us that void there. But, uh, we'll fill that in, we've got plenty, plenty of stones. Didn't see any animals come out particularly, uh, there were some droppings of something, but I would imagine when I was working on the outside it probably disturbed and whatever it was has come on the inside and hopefully found somewhere else to live. Okay, so uh, just showing you what I've done here. Put it in a couple of the Pianella stones. I've got thousands of them. I'll just let that set and that'll give me a good base. You can see that line of that uh, Bioquitrava. And then we'll put a little line of cement on top of these. On top here, just to bed each of those steels in as they come my way and also I started to close in that hole there you can see that uh, that gap really has started to open up now once we get these stones out again looks a bit of a mess but it'll all become obvious uh, I guess I've explained what I'm trying to do but getting there on a job like this is doing it in stages step by step just staying safe all the time are going to come out. I'll show you the ones that are going to come out. There's that one there. 
that one above there which looks like it's reliant on the one below and then if we go to the right hand side there is my plumb line hole which goes out to the outside that hole there so that's what this whole job's been done on is two of those holes but all that middle part is coming out where that green spray line is all down all the way down to uh, the foundations and that's going to be about five or six tons maybe even more of stone there so right, hopefully you'll be able to see some of this on the side of me I'll tuck myself in here so this one and this one I can tell this stone is a masonry stone automatically I know it's going to be heavy so I need to make sure that I'm going to be able to bring this down properly um, so this is going to come out without too much of a problem as you can see but in point of fact I need a little space to pull it forward through this gap and just pull it down and rest it gently on the floor if it doesn't come out before that one don't worry about all this this part is all supported on the outside now so there's nothing you can see these stones are all in there and there. So, if I put the um, crowbar in here, I'll just do a bit of lifting. See if I can ease that forward. You can ease them out. Probably the best way of doing this. I think we've still got to there. So I think you need to... Yeah, it does move, so that means it's ready to come out. It's how it does it is the important thing. This was a stone that was in for a window originally. And it's all a bit of a mess over here, but I'll get all that out and I'll clean up nicer. Now, this is the and what I want to do is I'm gonna get out this, this stone out without um, without breaking it, messing it up because it's a very usable stone. These are these are what are called the masonry stones, the ones with a square here yeah, and the flat face, about 30 euros a pop. So they are to be kept for other jobs. Now I can see it's moving here, so maybe this one is ready to come out too. Yeah, I just saw a little piece coming out here anyway. Let's try and wedge that out. If you do that, I've got one more thing at the top. So this one is holding this one up. So it's a matter of ed edging in that way and letting him just ease down there and I'll get that out because uh, it looks like it wants to fall out. Right, you can see that's just made a difference. Clearing that stuff out there. Right, we've got a gap in here. So when we get in there, that crowbar working, let the crowbar do the hard work. So as this moves over, you can see this. Start to, I just wanted to rest it down. Without. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the crowbar as a leader and see if I can put this by hand. It's that is large. Uh, 30, 40 kilos is that one. No problem. So I'm just going to ease this out of the roof. See if I can just get it to drop down on its own weight. Without making a great big issue. Right. Okay. So, uh, two big stones to come out here. Um, so it's not going to be pretty. Wow. Steps. Hey, 
anymore. They'll be on the winch. Anyway, one's out. Oh, that's a lovely stone. I'm just going to go back up and get that other one. I'm just going to make sure we're kind of on it. Yep, we are. Okay, this can be heavy. Very loose. It's very heavy. Get the spare stuff out. Uh, just got to work this one out. to take it down the front of this ladder. Okay. If we can do this, if this works, then I can slow it down the front of the ladder. Sometimes it hasn't worked. Okay, so what you can do is you put it on the first run. I don't even know where you can see me at the moment. Okay, there you are. I can, if I can get that stone over to the first run, and then I can roll it down each step, step at a time. Okay, we are halfway down. It is coming, it's, uh, it's a heavy one. Uh, when I get it down another two rungs, I should be able to pick it up. But picking it up at the moment is, oh no, no. Okay. Right, it's coming down the stairs really nicely. Right, okay. Be a nice glass of Multipulciano tonight. Right. Okay, so what you're going to be looking at here is a bit of a messy hole, really. Um, you could say. Right, so there is, so you're right inside, inside the wall. And you can see where the other piece of steel is at the end. I think that's the piece of steel we put in. And this is the hole now that's been made. Those two stones taking them out, bit of support above. We've got a nice flat base here. We haven't got a concrete in issue that we did have on the other side. But what we do have to do is to take... My hand's coming into place somewhere here. Yeah, uh, we've got a cup from here. Let's get a cut from here to around the back of this hole. So that's my plumb line hole. There, there, there. And it looks like this is going to come out. I'm not sure about this one, but certainly underneath. If this comes out, this will come out. But obviously I'm wear, wary of uh, keeping supports exactly where they are. Don't move anything. Uh, not until we start getting those uh, rest of those girders in. Anyway, I'm going to sign off for now. I can get a place where I can get a hammer and chisel in. 
And what I do every now and again is when I've removed one of these stones is just come away from it and see if anything else is going to fall down. Uh, so listening as well. So something it's got to come out. It can't stay in there because it's right in the way. Right, okay, we have it. So it wasn't such a big problem. Uh, there it is. Hopefully you can see it uh, coming out there. So ready to use for rebuilding. So let's clear the way up. Hopefully we are we are there. I don't want to got a bit of excess cement up here, which has got to come out. Obviously that's going to stop the the two girders knitting together properly. I'll, I'll clean all that up in a minute anyway. Uh, what I like about this one is that we have a we do have a nice flat surface. Although this is proud. So I've got a nice sharp chisel, and what I find is that. It digs in nice into the stone and starts to like exactly like that. So you get these nice chunks coming out and that will just start to give me a nice little line across there. Uh, this is this front stone here. It's going all the way back here. It's probably, it's probably a 60, 70 kilo stone. So leave it in there. And I prefer to chip away a bit. Can't do it with a machine. It's going to be too violent. So doing it by hand's the only way. Uh, we've got. I told you I wanted a proper square edge here, so um, I just want to nip the top off of it, or the bottom off this. There you go. I don't want it to hit too hard because I know what's going to happen. I'll stop. Bring it down too much stuff. Um, all right. So all of these nipping out bits, but bit by bit. Um, all right, we're not far from offering up that third girder, which I will be pleased about when it's gone in. Uh, right. Okay. Behind me is the hole to receive the. Uh, the next three lentils, um, what can I say? Uh, I didn't think I was going to be at this point today. It's nice and sunny outside, spring has sprung, uh, it's about 20 degrees. I've got plenty of daylight left. I've got the girders prepared, the hole is prepared, and I'm just going to get on with it. I'm going to leave the camera on where it is at the moment, out the way though. Uh, there's going to be a bit of dust and muck flying around, I imagine. I've just got a little bit of sweeping to do, uh, a very small amount. I'm going to try and ease one of these girders in. Um, it's not going to be pretty, so um, if it's a struggle, if it looks like a struggle, it probably is a struggle. But uh, nevertheless, some of these, some parts of this job are a struggle. I'm gonna do is get the leading in. 
side at the moment so I've got to turn it up right. So the ladder goes back. And lives all on its edge. square of it is making a diamond so what I need to do is to offer it in on the on the flat uh, which is something done I might do uh, Let's have a go at that. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to pull this out a fraction. Uh, I'm going to flip this up, bring it this side of the ladder. I should have enough room to do that. Right, so that goes back up. Right. Whew. So I've got the ladder in the way by. A quarter. I'm just wondering if I can. I've got the crowbar. And I can just get it to get a wedgie on the other end. holding just Looking like. Now, I've got a 
it's, uh, if you don't get the square on these exactly right, you're going to suffer. And so what I'm going to do is bring this, I think this one comes this way. to move this way a bit. Right. That's not going anywhere. Right. I thought your water break. Whisker, if there is such a thing. Uh, that wants to go in there. Um, I think we're getting so close. That's its destination point. Still got battery. Oh. Whether it will do it here or not. If it does it as easy as that, I'll be happy. Right. Okay, so crowbar at the ready. And let's give this a wedge of room here.
Right, that's going in tight. Um, very tight. Okay, so that's five girders in. Um, we've probably got a little space for a couple more to go in as well. Uh, I probably won't put you through the pain of, uh, of watching all that. Um, but nevertheless, everything's gone well today. End of the day today, so we're gonna finish up now. Um, next stage is gonna be part four. So we'll get the other couple of girders in. Obviously, we'll start to remove um, these bricks once we can see that whole section up there uh, properly stable but uh, if you like what you see um, if you can subscribe uh, ding the bell then you get notification that when the next video is coming out if you can stand to watch that long and tick the like box and we'll see you next time bye for now